Where do you see things going over the next, let's say, three or so years for the bowling industry? Where do you see the industry moving to? Yeah, some things people don't want to hear and some things people do. And I and it's hard for, because, you know, I come as an, two and a half years ago, would be perceived as an outsider. Sure. Deeply committed to the community and I care about the industry and that type of stuff. So we, we continue to focus on it. Like when the pandemic was on and uh, OS, which is the like the high school uh, athletic thing, they weren't going to do a, a bowling tournament in 2020 or 21 okay. for state championships. So we did, we had wow. two times the trophies. We gave away $2,500 in college scholarship money and we mm -hmm. filled it in a week and the place was, so just continue to do some things like that. But I, I think you, you're pretty much going to have to find that balance between league and tournament and open bowling because of the money is probably better in the open bowl. If we're getting just, I'm just talking financial, I'm not talking sure. industry wise, but yeah. So finding that balance, cause I think What's happening right now is people are either all entertainment, all league and bowling, and at least my passions yeah. would be a blend of the two yeah. without disregarding one. It, and then I know it's really early, but it seems like at some point string is going to take over. I don't know mm -hmm. what that looks like, but it already uh, has for new projects. Yep. Yeah. Uh, for, yeah. Yeah. I think uh, some of the bigger folks had 2000 lanes last year. They have 4,500 this year that they're putting. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and we're an older center. We have 8270s and we're in this spring, we're putting in a new scoring system and, and probably new machines. Oh, really? Yeah. So the industry will probably make its decisions at least a little bit by next spring so that yep. we'll decide what's best to do. Yeah. Yep. And then I think again, if everybody would just, you gotta, even you is you're young and successful and ambitious, but we tend to lean towards what we've always done. And I think whether you're selling napkins, burgers, or bowling, you need to always try to fight against that to continue to innovate. I, like I think as bowling centers, I think we need to consider that. Look, listen, I'm not any smarter than anybody else out there, but how can every square foot pay its rent? So when we took over, there was five different vendors of, of video games and Papa shop machines that were flat basketballs and whatever. And so it wasn't a real popular move, but I said, thank you, but you're all dismissed. Like we found one great vendor that comes in and keeps top notch machines in there. Now there's this revenue that happens every month and it increases the experience for our customers because they can afford yeah. to bring in better games than I can read or write mm -hmm. a $25,000 check for a pinball machine or whatever it is. Sure. So that's a move that also, I think that we've done well with is to continue to just have somebody who's a pro that already can do that. And it's mm -hmm. a passive income for us. Yeah. So, yeah. Outsource some of those items and offer new product lines, essentially. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I really like that. Yeah. I think shorter leagues is probably going to continue to get more popular with our yeah. short attention span culture, but the future will be told. It's not necessarily your or my opinion. It's going to count. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, yeah. I've definitely seen some of that, but it doesn't necessarily have to be shorter league. You can do two 15s back to back or a couple of different eights yeah. back to back where it's still the same people. But if you need to sit out a season, you can, you know, the flexibility. Yeah, it's like what we're doing. We have the 32s, mm -hmm. a chunk of those that run, but we'll do a nine pin no tap for eight or 10 weeks for couples or whatever. It's more yeah. of an entry point. Like it's nobody's ever been in a league before, but they have fun coming down here. Here's just mm -hmm. a step closer to being a part of the community. Okay. So, yeah. I don't think that short leagues will totally take over, but offering one of them on a slower night, I think has worked well for us and so right. knows. Yeah. That in the uh, social leagues too, where it's might not be sanctioned, but it could be their first foray into a league base where it's more fun and food and beverage oriented, but now they're a leaguer and who knows if from there they can take another step. Hey, did you like this video? Great. We make five of them a week. Subscribe to get more and to keep learning about what's working in the bowling industry. I'll talk to you then.